What's up, guys? Tattoo Doc here. Welcome back to episode 16 of Rad Talk. In this episode, Dennis and I briefly discuss a little bit of AI and radiology. We talk about the Aaron Rodgers injury, and then we play my favorite segment, which is question of the day. As always, if you enjoyed the content, please like, comment, and subscribe to help us grow the channel. Welcome, 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 you beautiful, wonderful people, to another wonderful episode of Rad Talk, where sports and medicine collide. I'm Dennis. And I'm Gage. And I'm going to get us started on today's episode. So I was mindlessly scrolling through, I think it was TikTok because I, you know, I waste so much time on social media, but I have finally made my way onto, what do you call it? Healthcare TikTok? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So a lot, yeah, a lot of my feed is now like doctors and nurses and techs and all that kind of stuff, which is good that's where we want it for you know our our account like that Mm -hmm. but what i forget what who the video was or who the creator was but oh it was a it's a meme he's like a meme page he just he's a radiologist but he posts a lot of memes Mm -hmm. and one of them was this clip from a guy in 2016 i think Mm -hmm. where he was like you're he was talking about ai and radiology and his quote was i'm paraphrasing but he's like you're the radiologist is the coyote that has run off the cliff but you know hasn't looked down yet so they don't know that they're about to fall essentially meaning that ai was about to take over Mm. and that was in 2016 and the whole meme was the guy he's like i post this every year because ai still has not taken my job seven Mm. years later so that got me thinking about ai in general Mm. and i remember when i was interviewing oh man when did i interview 2017 16 so somewhere in there that mm-hmm. was like one of the questions because they always they always ask like do you have any questions for us mm-hmm. and the one i came up with was like what are your thoughts on ai so ai was a thing even when i was in it would have been 2016 wow so we've been worried as radiologists been worried about this for what are we going on seven eight nine ten years somewhere in there at least yeah. so th- that got me thinking about just ai in general mm-hmm. and we're not going to have a deep dive into what AI is in terms of radiology. Mm -hmm. But one interesting thing that I thought about that I never hear people talking about, there's two facets of it. Um, If you're watching the, if you watch the video, you can see it's AI versus humans essentially is what we're asking, right? Like who's Mm -hmm. better, Mm -hmm. you know, us or AI. So Mm -hmm. the first thing that I can, I'll talk about and I'll, you know, we'll open it up to you is before we get into the liability, one aspect that nobody ever asks is do you even want a computer to read your images? Like if you took, if you or you, your mom or your grandma, whoever went into the hospital and you found out that a fucking algorithm was reading your images, Mm -hmm. how would you feel as a person that doesn't read images? Just as that you're a normal patient, how would you feel knowing that a computer is what says grandma's head CT is negative? Right. I think uh, me as a person, I think that, my first thought would be like, I would want another human to look over that. Mm -hmm. Like that would make me uh, very nervous. But I mean, you start thinking about, okay, there's human error as well. Mm -hmm. And so when I have another human looking over something, maybe that human had a bad day and they didn't, they missed or what, you know, whatever the human Mm -hmm. error. We've talked about that in the prior podcast where it was episode that was humans are perfect. Right. Yeah. Um, And so there's, there's, there's that, but I think, my my first thought, and I'll answer your question, is just I, I would be super nervous of um, anything artificially, just one hundred percent, always always working. Because I, you know, the first thing they say when something goes wrong on your computer is like turn it off, turn it back on. And so, like you know, if yeah. something's going wrong with that particular when they're reading that particular scan and they kick out something that's not correct, that makes me really nervous. So yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I would not feel comfortable with that, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's my, that's something that I don't think people just, they don't think about. I would be the same as you. Yeah. And I mean, I'm somebody that reads images, so I know we make mistakes. Right. And it's not like we've talked about before, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. We're going to make mistakes. It's, just, sure. it's a numbers game. And yeah. a machine is not going to be any different. It's not going to be 100% accurate. So it's going to make mistakes too. Right. So I just thought it was an interesting concept because I don't think people think about like, I mean, we don't trust computers to do a lot of things now. Would mm-hmm. you trust the computer to to make your coffee? Like it's going to fuck it up yeah. at some point. Yeah. Well, but, and I, and I think and I said and I know this is uh, touch on. I know we talked about Z Dog in the past and his and his wife being a radiologist mm-hmm. uh, at Stanford. 
And I know that he had an episode that he had talked about. Well, you know, I, she became a radiologist because it was finally something that could be black and white. And, mm-hmm. and there's so many shades of gray, even. Yeah, in, it's not black and white at all. There, yeah. There's there's nothing that's like definitive. Yes, this is this definitive. Yes, this is this mm-hmm. definitive. I mean, you can yeah. lean one way or the other um, yeah. based on the clinical stuff and, and everything else. But nothing is definitive. And so she, mm-hmm. she always went back to like, I'm not worried about my job being taken because because of those calculations that a, a person can make mm-hmm. that maybe the computer can't quite make yet. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it can't um, what's taken into account history, right? So it doesn't know context. Yeah. So if I show you, um, I mean, I don't know, a bowel, a loop of bowel, right. there's so many things that could be going on mm-hmm. and it can look the same on imaging. But if, if you tell me this patient is 85 and they've lost 30 pounds of weight unexpectedly, I'm like, Oh shit, this is yeah. cancer. Right. AI is not going to know that. But if you right. tell me they that you know they haven't lost weight, but they have like a hundred and three degree fever, and mm-hmm. the white count's elevated, I'm like, oh, okay, this is mm-hmm. an infection. So right. I think there's things that AI just cannot. Maybe they can train it to take that stuff into account. I don't know that they can, yeah. but I think the the his, the context is important when you in 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 radiology. Yeah, you start thinking about the human brain and how many calculations the human brain makes on this and that and this and that. I mean. AI, I mean, and some of the amazing stuff. I mean, we've talked about chat GPT and, and, and all those mm-hmm. artificial <laughs> intelligence that just like, you know, can fix your papers or fix your whatever mm-hmm. you're doing. But I think, I think, you know, the answer is always like, like both, like if wherever we can use AI to help with mm-hmm. certain things, whether that's templates or, or whatever that looks like what CAD, you know, I don't know. Mm-hmm whatever CAD stands for dog actually. shit <laughs> computer it stands for computer aided detection Data that's what detection. they use in uh mams okay. but even cat i mean cat is terrible it's mm-hmm. it's not good at picking out uh cancers yeah. right so it's just everything's it's just, a tool and like you know if you're yeah. if you're batman it's another tool maybe in your tool belt that you can yeah. you know no 100 percent. that's what it should be used for because mm-hmm. like you said nothing is is a hundred percent. I was going to even use an example, like a, a clot, like a pulmonary embolism. Mm-hmm. That's pretty straightforward most mm-hmm. of the time, but right. it's um, artifact. There's a lot of things that like artifact mm-hmm. where it can look like a clot, but as a radiologist, you know, okay, it's oriented this way or this, mm-hmm. that, whatever you're like, right. okay, I think this is a clot. Whereas AI may spit out that it's going to be, they're just going to call everything a clot because right. of what we're about to talk about. But yeah, I still think it's just not something people think about in terms of like, do you really want right. a computer to read this? Is, sometimes it's life and death imaging. Mm-hmm. And, so, and even if you look at even AI with, uh, with driving, we were talking about this driving cars, mm-hmm. you know, um, and this guy goes back to who's liable. You know, if, if, a, if a car wreck happens cause a computer malfunction, you know, who's liable for that and who should be liable for um, the, these particular cases being read, if an AI reads something yeah. wrong, you know, you, I think it, you're always going to have to have the radiologist there to, you, to sign off on it. If the radiologist chooses to just lean on AI more than another radiologist does, yeah. then, then they still are going to be the one that has to take the liability for that particular case. Mm-hmm. They're in, they're and then, I mean, if, 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 if we still have to be there to overread it, what's the fucking point of the AI? It's almost like a, um, a resident. Mm-hmm. Right. Sure. They make things easier sometimes because they predictate the report and yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. But if they fuck up, mm-hmm. it makes yeah. your job so much more difficult. Right. And if it's a, uh, if you, th- if you look at a chest X-ray, fine. You want AI to dictate a chest X-ray. I can tell you a chest X-ray is negative in 15 seconds. Fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when you get to more complicated, like cross-sectional stuff, I don't want an AI report generated for me because yeah. I'm still going to have to go through it myself. Right. Right. So I, then I use my uh, search pattern. So mm-hmm. if my search pattern is not the same as the AI, I have to rearrange their report or I have to rethink, uh, I have to re- change my thought process, which right. as we've talked before is how you miss things. Like when you change, like I told everybody, I read a CT, I, every study I read, I read it the same way every mm-hmm. time. I say the same thing every time. Mm-hmm. And it's just repetition. Yeah. So if, if AI spits out a report and it's not in my style, mm-hmm. not in my pattern, then right. I'm just going to delete it and do it myself. Yeah, but uh, I mean, there are 
we'll get to the liability issue in a minute, but there are ways AI can help. You've talked about, mm -hmm. uh, what are they called? Like typographical errors, speak errors. Like when we dictate really fast and it says the wrong word, if mm -hmm. I can just click a button and chat GPT or whatever says, boom, just changes it. Fine. Good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are some places you've talked a lot about VRAD. I think they have a thing that, uh, sorts, I guess, categorizes. So it can say, oh, this is probably a negative chest X-ray. So it will put it towards the end of the list or like if it's a stat, mm -hmm. but if, it, if they pick up a brain CT and it's, they think it's positive, they can mm -hmm. move it to the top of the list. So the radiologist reads it first. So AI would be fantastic in those areas. But right. as far as like, replace, it's not, it, maybe I'll never say never, but yeah. <clears throat> to replace us, it's not anytime soon. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. <clears throat> And then the original the original thing we wanted to talk about, which I thought of like it was radiologists specifically, I'm sure all doctors, but radiologists was specifically are always worried about liability. Mm -hmm. We're always worried about getting sued because I've said this before too. It's uh, mm -hmm. us and surgeons are pretty much one-on-one, -on -one, right? It's just us. Mm -hmm. If I miss, I can't, there's nothing to say that, you know, yep. it's just my word, my report against whatever. Right. So in that case, obviously we're liable. But if you put this 100% on AI and they read a chest or a, a, a head CT that's they say is negative, but maybe there's a little brain bleed that they missed and it's, it, you know, maybe it blends in with the bone around it. So it couldn't pick out the contrast. Right. And then that bleed, they don't, maybe she's on blood thinners, the patient's on blood thinners, they don't stop them and the bleed just keeps going, expands, you know, the, whatever, leads to the hemorrhage, right. leads to, she dies. Who are you going to, who's going to be at fault there? Is it going to be the person or the company that created the AI? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be the hospital that, you know, licensed the AI that, to be used or whatever? So I think that's just something I've never seen anyone talk about that. I'm sure people have, yeah. but I've just never seen anyone it, talk it about bring, it. That brings me into another thought. Um, would it, would hospitals then not be for licensing AI? And so that would be something that as a private radiologist group, they would have to agree to license the mm -hmm. AI because the hospital could be like, well, you know, we didn't, we didn't want any part of that. So that's your guys' decision to go that route. And so it just keeps more yeah. home on the radiologist group. And then we're not going to do it because, yeah, why would we want to be liable for if the AI miss it? We're not going to pay for that. Like, no, we yeah. don't want that. For sure. We, so. We're going to, uh, there's some humans will trust the AI more than themselves, but I would guarantee majority of radiologists are going to trust themselves, their read more than a computer, no matter how smart the computer is, whatever. Mm -hmm. If it's seen a billion chest x-rays, we're still going to trust ourselves yeah. over the AI. So we wouldn't, I, I don't think of radiology, maybe yeah. a big group would do that. I don't know, but it could just be a tool. Like I, I don't, you know, a, a, yeah. some sort of way they can form it to make it an added tool for something that maybe it just has all your templates set up and it just mm -hmm. spits out exactly what you want to, you know, I, I don't know. In some way you make it a tool for you. Um, and, that, yeah, that's, I mean, that's coming. We can't fight that. Yeah. But to say that it's going to replace us, uh, still a long way away. There's yeah. so many things yeah. people just, the whole kind of the whole concept was people just focus on is AI good enough mm -hmm. to do the job. There's so much other shit to, to think about outside of just being good at the job. So that, right. to me, that was kind of the whole point of this was like one AI is still not good enough to do the job. But even if they were, there's still other things that have to be considered. Humans, I think, will always, for hopefully, majority of them will always trust other humans more than a machine. But, you know, maybe it's good for uh, like a little podunk hospital, you know, that yeah. nobody wants to go to. And it, maybe they can't get a teleradiology group to pick it up. So maybe there's avenues for it. But yeah, just to say that it's going to that's it's not going to replace us anytime soon. But, but I'll be retired before it. Yeah. gets to that point so and that's and that might be even a crazy like a uh, interesting thought you know that a, a, a hospital that you know struggling mm -hmm. to have radiologists they have some sort of ai there that it can do a quick generalization over something that they're really worried about and so if they can't get it to a radiologist immediately this thing can look it over and say give them I don't know, some idea or something mm -hmm. um yeah because i mean there's a speaking from experience, these, especially, uh, especially these like little small hospitals, a lot of groups don't want to take them on because usually they're in rural areas. Right. Right. So usually those people are, I get underserved as, and they're not as, um, wealthy. 
Mm. So one, they either have government insurance, which is not going to Medicare, Medicaid, that's not going to pay very well. Right. Two, they don't have insurance at all. So they're just not going to pay. They're going to get all this stuff, uh, yeah. all this stuff done and it's going to be for free. Mm-hmm. So radiology groups don't want to take on contract. It's sad that it's a business, but it's the reality of the situation. So they don't yeah. want to take on contracts where we're reading this stuff for free because the, the patients aren't paying or Medicare, Medicaid pays like dog shit. So oh. Uh, maybe AI would be good for that, but I think it's still, I don't, I don't want to give like a time frame, but it's still way off. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, yeah. Which is probably, I don't know when it doesn't need to come early. It needs to come when it's, when it's ready. Yeah. <laughs> it can really help. Like you don't want to be out there and still. Yeah. Cause the results are going to be catastrophic if, it, if they're wrong. Yeah. So, exactly. I mean, it's crazy that Elon was even able to put it in a car. Cause that's to me, you start somewhere that's, I don't know where, but it's just not important. Self-driving yeah. car, that's important. You're going to kill people. He probably has killed people. Yeah. I'm sure there are stories out there. If you put yeah. it in medicine, you're going to kill people. Mm-hmm. So maybe you start somewhere where you don't kill people. Yeah. yeah. And you hone it. And right. I think that maybe that was the intention of CAD was to try and, but. Yeah, it's I mean, been, that's been around for, geez. Oh my God. Forever. And you can look up the reports. It's terrible. CAD is terrible. The new iteration of, of computer-aided detection is, is getting better. But Mm. it's I think I saw an article the other day where it's just now approaching. So if they have a radiologist read it and they have the AI read it, it's just as good as having two radiologists read it because Uh maybe you're aware or maybe you're not aware. But in other countries, the standard is to have double reads for MAMS. So two radiologists will read the, the mammogram here in the States. We just have one person read it. But there was an article that said that AI plus the radiologist is now comparable to the double radiologist read which is nice because then you cut out the time that the second radiologist has to read it so you save time you save money whatever but so that's that's the avenue for ai i think but interesting that's a, little, that's a tangent so yeah i looked up cad so cad said it was found in like 1982 you yeah, imagine the 80s that? yeah my gosh like that's just it's, it's still terrible i mean the meme the beginning of AI for us. I mean, for, yeah. in, for radiology. Yeah. yeah radiology wise. But, um, uh, all right. Okay. I think that's, that was, a, that was a passionate talk about. <laughs> yeah, it was. And, and, AI. If, and if you're not just for the, for the podcast folks, if you're not hearing this, if you look on our YouTube, like we have a completely new setup. And oh it's, yeah. Our ticker looks great. That's right. All of the rad talk. So what he's saying is you go to rad underscore talk underscore DG on YouTube and you can see what he's talking about. So it's it's a beautiful thing. All right. As we continue. But uh, okay. So the next segment is something. I don't know where I got the, I don't know what made me think of it other than the injury itself, but we're going to get, since we are, you know, where sports and medicine collide, I thought this was a good opportunity for us to talk about Mm -hmm. an Avenue that I know. I just, I don't think most people think about in terms of when athletes get injured Mm-hmm. I've, I've never even thought about it. If I wasn't a radiologist, I would never think about it either. But I assume most people think the athlete gets injured and the surgeon, boom, straight to the surgeon. Diagnosis made, surgery, whatever. Mm-hmm. So for the people that aren't aware, we're big NFL fans. Mm-hmm. And there was a major injury. Was that last Monday? Yes, last Monday. Yeah, so, what? yeah, last Monday, Aaron Rodgers it was like 60, 75 seconds, four plays into his first drive with his new team. Yeah. He goes down and we can start with just the injury itself, but he goes down and tears his Achilles. We, they didn't know it at the time, but he tears his mm-hmm. Achilles. Mm-hmm. So shameless plug before we get started. I did a radiologist reacts episode on this. Just go mm-hmm. to our YouTube, Brad underscore talk underscore DG. I go into a little bit of anatomy, a little bit of MRI stuff. So mm-hmm. if you're into that kind of stuff, go listen to it. But uh, I first want to get your thoughts on, I talked about this in the video briefly, but I want to get your thoughts on the Twitter docs. You mm-hmm. know, when people, when these athletes get injured and there's video going around, yeah. everyone becomes a doctor. Right. This is true. I think, um, the, so the Twitter doc, and, and I can be, um, even 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 myself, like I looked back at the video and mm-hmm. you start playing it and yep. you know, you, they zoom in on his Achilles area yeah. and, and, it, and it makes it look like you can see that twitch in the Achilles the reverberation, where it looks like yeah. It, yeah, reverberation mm-hmm. yeah, where it looks like it's tearing. Snaps, and, so yeah. like, and so you're like, well, there it is. Like I yeah. just saw it. You just watched it tear in real time. Yeah. Um, and, and initially, I think I was hopeful it was just a, a high ankle sprain. 
mm-hmm. or, or something like that. But then he was he, too. Yeah, I'm sure he. And I think he probably knew. He knew. Yeah, yeah these, these athletes, they're not stupid. They know. His yeah. was kind of interesting because if you think of uh, uh, KD and like Kobe and mm-hmm. maybe even Clay, there was no contact, right? So they always end up looking back to see if someone like kicked them or something. Mm-hmm. But I mean, his was his was a contact injury. But they're not. He knew. He may not have known it was. He probably knew it was an Achilles because that's a kind of a an obvious thing. Yeah. But yeah. he knew something was wrong. Yeah. So I would I just get pissed off. They just replay this video nine thousand times, mm-hmm. and people are like, oh, he tore his Achilles. Oh, Liz Frank. All oh, this. I'm like, man, just don't speculate. It doesn't help to speculate. Right. There are. Uh, I say in in the YouTube video, don't the surgeon. One, I think surgeons are really good. They can diagnose off a video. They knew what was wrong immediately. The orthopedic surgeons. Two. They're not going to slice his, his fucking leg open based off a Twitter video. So all the speculation doesn't do any good. Mm-hmm. But uh, mm-hmm. so that was that was I was I just hate when that stuff happens. Like it's, when D Rose tore his back in 2011 with 2012, mm-hmm. whatever it was. Yeah. People just the video gets passed around. Well, even Shaq, but, uh, you look at, I think one of the ones that, that most stand out to me is Shaq. And I don't remember he was playing for the Celtics at the time. And he was just literally ro- walking down the floor. And he he looked back just like you said that he looked like he's like I thought somebody yeah. kicked me, yeah. And just, just, walk, just walking it. up the floor, just snapped yeah. it on, over. So I mean, once you get the the Twitter past the Twitter aspect, there was another interesting aspect that's not medicine related that we can briefly talk about. Mm-hmm. But it his injury reignited the turf versus grass mm-hmm. debate, mm-hmm. and yeah. I kind of briefly mentioned it in the YouTube video. I'm not an expert on this, obviously, but I think it's because grass will give. So if Aaron's Aaron's foot was planted in the turf and the turf would said, fuck you, like you're not going anywhere. Cause mm-hmm. I don't know if people are aware, but it's like a concrete surface under the turf. Mm-hmm. So when you, st- when you plant, you're, you're stuck. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think the concept is that grass will give had Aaron's foot get, was able to give right there. He doesn't tear his Achilles because yeah. there's the, uh, the force isn't there because his foot gives. So I think that's kind of, the overall concept, but the athletes are big on grass versus turf. Mm-hmm. They all love grass. It's because I think and, and the data has shown the injuries are way less on grass. Yeah. Of those, I'm looking up briefly here, it says of those non contact players have a 32% higher um, injury rate on the turf. I believe, so one third of non contact knee injuries on turf and a stagnant 69% of non contact foot and ankle. Yep. But, see? So it's just it's because it's, when you're when that's when that foot plants, it's not going anywhere. So yeah. I mean, I'm a I'm a 49ers fan, and I remember they were at the same stadium in oh man, the year after they played the Chiefs, they were supposed to be really good again. Obviously, they played the Jets and legitimately like three people tore their ACL on that turf. And I was like, man. So yeah. maybe since Aaron's prominent enough, the NFL's finally like, all right, let's because the owner is going to be pissed, right? Because it's going to be more expensive to go back to grass because you have to maintain the grass, do all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. But and when you're prominent, the Jets are losing money. You know they're losing money. Tons. They're, one, they're they're paying Rogers fifty, sixty million. He's getting the money, even though he's oh, not playing. He's going to get it guaranteed. Uh, once they once they start to tank, because Zach Wilson's just not as good. Mm-hmm. Sales are going to tank, so they're going to lose money on ticket mm-hmm. sales, concessions, merchandise, all this other stuff. So maybe this will be a big enough hit where the owners are like, shit, let's just. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just do it. Listen to this stat, man. Of those non-contact injuries, players have a 32% higher rate of non-contact knee injuries on turf mm-hmm. and a staggering 69% higher rate of non-contact foot so ankle ankle. injuries on turf compared 70%. to 70%. 70%. It's insane. And these aren't like small injuries. No. He tore his Achilles. And at his age, this could be it. I think he's kind of signaled that he's going to come back. But he's not going to be the same. Yeah. Uh, you remember when Kobe tore his Achilles? He was obviously almost out of the league at that point. Yeah. He wasn't the same. Clay's not been the same since he tore his. So I think, I think he has, a, and I know we're getting off, but I think this. I think with him, he has a possibility just because he's not. He's not Kobe to where he's like leans on his athleticism. Yeah, no, he's gonna. He'll be back. He's got a. But, you know, his arm is a cannon still. Yeah, but he's mobile enough. He gets he's around. Mo- yeah, he's mobile enough, and he still might have a little bit of, of mobility. Um, yeah, but the, we got on a tangent there. The cool. uh, the whole point was to say that as a radiologist, we play a huge role in diagnosing sports injuries. And I 
feel uniquely qualified because that's what I went to fellowship for was MSK. So the person that read Aaron's imaging would be an MSK radiologist. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I kind of talked about it in the video a little bit, but he went and got x-rays. I hate when they say the x-rays were negative. That doesn't really mean anything, right? It just means there's no fracture. But these are usually soft tissue injuries and x-ray doesn't show that. So, I mean, the MRI is the gold standard and the MRI is what tells him or tells us. And then we tell the surgeon, this is what, you know, he tore his Achilles. This is what it looks like, yada, 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 that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a perspective. People don't think about the the radiology. We're, if you want to call us the middleman, then yeah, that's what we are. But we play a huge, that radiologist played a huge role in diagnosing Aaron's injury. Cause in his case, it's probably easy. Cause it was probably completely torn. Mm -hmm. But if it wasn't completely torn, it gets, there's some nuances in there. If it's high grade versus low grade, you know, if it's high grade, you maybe you still go to surgery. If it's low grade, maybe you don't. So right. there's a, it's yeah. a, there's a little bit of nuance in there. For sure. And, and it definitely goes to, goes to folks like you first. And then the surgeon makes those decisions from there. Mm -hmm. And we work in concert with the surgeon. Obviously they're, they're heavily involved in, and they look at their own images and that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. It's the radiologist plays a big role. We're just, we don't see patients. Aaron, maybe he saw the radiologist because mm -hmm. I went to fellowship with a, um, my attendings used to work for, oh man, the angels somewhere, maybe the Eagles. She worked with a lot of professional athletes mm -hmm. and it'd say sometimes it's very stressful because the player comes in, like they get, okay. they get off the scanner and they go straight to the room, you know, and they're mm -hmm. like, what does it say? So you have to interpret the images with the, with the patient essentially in the room, which we never yeah. do. Yeah. So I'm sure he was heavily involved, but. Right. Um, which is for one of our future questions, probably. Um, I know we wanted to get into the next question you were going to lead us to gauge here. Actually, we, we talked about um, AI and kind of the advancement of medicine. Mm -hmm. We'll briefly mention uh, the whole point we wanted to talk about this was because they did a, a newer surgery on uh, Aaron Rodgers, mm -hmm. right? I forget. It's I think they called it a spree, a speed brace or something. Uh, but essentially, it's just a new way to do the Achilles. I did a, I looked briefly looked up an article, but I think the weak point when you do the surgery is the stitches, because obviously the surgeon has to stitch the tendons back together because mm -hmm. it's torn. I think this is like a, I don't know what it's made out of, but it's like a little anchor that's supposed mm -hmm. to be stronger than. The stitches would be so that's kind of how this all tied in it's kind of advancing mm -hmm. orthopedic mm -hmm. surgery mm -hmm. we're talking about advancing radiology so mm -hmm. msk up your yeah. wheel yeah and then you want to talk about travis hunter you want to yeah 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 uh, the injury yesterday from travis hunter with uh which in my in my opinion was a cheap shot um yeah it was a little, think, little dirty i think it was a little i think it was late i think he had he shouldn't have done that um but but i know you would mention that where you think he probably went right afterwards for them to make the decision because he's going to be out for the next couple of weeks, says Deion Sanders prime, the coach. Um, I, I, yeah. I, I don't know if you wanted to, how you wanted to dive into that. Yeah. So I, I did a quick, these fucking dogs. I did a quick uh, video and I mean, likely what happened is these athletes gets, they get taken care of at He, he goes to Colorado. So mm -hmm. he went to the university hospital. They get all their care there. So mm -hmm. when I did fellowship, all the athletes went to the university. So he probably went to the university hospital, um, assuming they have like typical ER docs. He mm -hmm. probably got imaged like head to toe. He probably did uh, brain all the way down, which includes the C-spine, T-spine, L-spine, all that. Mm -hmm. So probably did a CT abdomen pelvis. But if I had to guess, since Coach Sanders said he's only going to be out a couple weeks, mm -hmm. there's no obviously no internal damage. Mm -hmm. There's obviously no uh, head trauma that they could see right imaging is not good for a concussion if that's what they're worried about mm -hmm. but there's no internal damage no spine fracture no head trauma so if i had to guess i would say he probably has broken ribs bruised ribs something mm -hmm. yeah something. and that's why he'll be out a couple weeks if that's the case his return to play will be how much pain can he tolerate right because you're not going to do any more damage you could mm -hmm. puncture a lung i guess but it's yeah. it's going to come down to how much pain can he tolerate so a couple weeks is probably generous and i'm sure he'll get some good uh some good meds That's, <laughs> some uh, good med, yeah some, some pain. good anti-inflammatories but pain management yeah obviously he probably didn't lacerate his spleen or something he didn't 
no, yeah, if, if he did that, he he might be out for the year. Yeah. So there, I'm I'm banking that there's no internal damage because mm-hmm. Coach Sanders said a couple weeks. Yeah, if you have a spleen laceration, kidney laceration, liver, you're yeah. you're out more than a couple weeks. Yeah. So I would assume he probably has some broken or bruised ribs, maybe a lung contusion. So. Right, something they can get him back soon. And it was crazy yeah. with these two, these two major injuries to these major, major folks a part of these programs. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of which due to, was probably due to turf. Yeah, uh, the other one was a cheap shot, and it's that's unfortunate because uh, Colorado's now three and zero, and they're about to play Oregon and USC, the two biggest games they could have all year, and he's not going to play probably neither one. So. Which is yeah, which could I mean because Colorado they continue to win. I mean they have a big opportunity to, to yeah. If you beat these two teams, you could you could be a uh, playoff, playoff contender. Mm-hmm. So and to lose the guy who plays both sides of the ball, yeah, it's unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. All right, now we get to do my favorite segment, and we got yeah. a good. I'm, I'm I'm proud of this question. So we got a good question today. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna take it. Okay, a little, little question of the day. Run with question it. of the day segment. Question me, of the day. Let me read this word for word here. All right, let's. Oh, you moved it. Hold on. Yeah. I, I, I okay, so it. I want you to give me one trait, one masculine trait or trait of men, mm-hmm. traditional trait. So one traditional trait of men that is true in your life. Stereotype. Mm-hmm. One traditional stereotype of men that is true in your life um i think and i really thought i'd really think about this and because i know we went back and forth for me probably a stereotype that's true is uh, i can be i've been told i don't know if i agree but i've been told a couple times that i can be overly competitive with certain things and i think that's very you mean like like things that don't matter no, you know, maybe I, I would say th- maybe sometimes things that don't matter, like you want to make sure that you hit, you know, I hit more shots than you in the trash can or I um, beat you in a certain sport or, you know, I feel like that's probably a I've been told as an overly masculine trait that I it's, stere- it's a stereotype um, because, you know, there's women that are also overly competitive as well. But I, I think that sometimes, you know, I kind of maybe take it up a notch and um, I've been told that I am, can get super competitive. And uh, it, and sometimes it's it's probably, you know, I think it was one time when, when Gage and I was playing basketball and I just had to play one more game. And uh, that one more game cost me a dislocated finger. And so I just couldn't just walk away and just call it a day. I had to play one more. And so there's always this like urge to just do a little bit more sometimes. And so I think that's probably my possibly stereotype that I would, I would say that I exude. The people have told me, that I don't know if I agree with it, but <laughs> people have told me that I exude, I guess. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's probably pretty crom- common among men, you know, mm-hmm. to be overly competitive, especially when it's on things that don't matter. Uh, I, I remember that time you broke your, dislocated your finger because that was, I was the one that wanted to quit. Yeah. No, you were like, let's call it a day, Dennis. Let's just go. And I was like, yeah. no, fine, one more. And you're like, oh, I'm done. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, first time. We- and I think that's pretty typical for, <clears throat> for males is just to be overly competitive especially about dumb shit that doesn't matter, you know, throwing things at trash cans. And it's usually, it's usually just between us, which I think yeah. it's just mm-hmm. dudes being bros, you know, stuff yeah. like that. But, uh, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that uh, another thing that would fall into that category is um, it's like sports teams. Like we get overly, mm-hmm. like if you're, te- if you're, if you're like a traditional sports dude, sports bro, if your team mm-hmm. loses, it like ruins your whole day. You know, <laughs> yeah. you break TVs and shit like yeah. that. So that's Cry. pretty, that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty stereotypical. Right. Don't cry. No, no, don't cry. <laughs> don't cry. Don't show your emotions. Yeah. And look what the lead us two gauges one. Yeah. So my <laughs> that is easily mine. Is I, I tend to bottle things up. I don't show uh what's the word? Emotionally unavailable, I think is what the uh, kids would call it. So I just don't I've never been I've never been a big sharer. Um, I don't think that it just doesn't help me. You know, you don't want to burden other people with your problems. So I just you know, you just bottle mm-hmm. it up, shove it. Mm-hmm. I mean, deep down there, you just <laughs> shove it deep down. So it never, it never makes an appearance, mm-hmm. 
but uh, or I mean, if you can't regulate your emotions, it does make an appearance and you kill people, you know, so stuff mm -hmm. like that. Or you have a heart but, attack. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, a little stress induced <laughs> heart attack. Yeah, that's, that's real. That's a, yeah. Strokes. Um, heart attack. I think uh, the sports one's probably it used to much. I used to be much more um, involved. So that would have been stereotypical for me too. If the sports mm -hmm. thing, especially like uh, well, when was it? Press. Whenever LeBron was on uh, the Heat, you mm. know, I was very involved. So, and people mm. love to hate. So, your friends know that you like LeBron and he loses. It's fucking Tuesday night in February <laughs> and he loses a game to Charlotte and they're just shitting on you. And you're like, oh mm. my God. So, but I, I mean, I've kind of grown out of that. But definitely the emotion thing. I just, mm. I bottle mm. everything up, which I think is, yeah. it's, I don't know if it's like a 1950 stereotype. You know, your dad's like, you're not a real man if you yeah. <laughs> express your emotions. So, you're just like, all right, I guess I'll just shove them down there and bottle the deep up yeah that's true. i hope they go away yeah <laughs> it's just fun. Been holding a good crying for 30 yeah. years and yeah yeah i think i think it's fine to bottle them in front of people you have if you can whatever you do behind closed doors you know however you get it out behind closed doors that's fine mm -hmm. but i don't i don't think you have to share it with everybody you know you don't yeah. have to, sharing is caring but not always you know yeah whatever whatever keeps you from having a heart attack or yeah whether you're talking well, to your therapist or, or however yeah. you want to go yeah. about doing it, you know, I mean, you you're my therapist, so <laughs> it's, it's essentially therapy for us. So. Yeah. And, and so. afterwards I'm going to shoot a shot and um, make sure That's I hear right. it on my out. I'm going to so. go watch, I'm going to go watch the Eagles play. Mm -hmm. Who's playing tonight? Oh, the Patriots and somebody. <clears throat> the That's my therapy. And Assuming the 49ers won, I'm in a good mood. Yeah. So yeah, it would suck if they lost. They were a really close game, but yeah. Um, but uh, I what, think that's it. We get we're getting this down now. Good, thirty six yeah. minutes. We got this in the bag. And I feel so, like I wanna I wanna tell everyone where to go find us at. But yeah. I'm gonna tell the listeners because the viewers right. are gonna be able know. to see everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you're listening, rad underscore talk dg on the social medias on the gram, YouTube, TikTok, X, Twitter, whatever you wanna call it. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, podcast wise, find us everywhere at rad talk. Um, if you want to sponsor us or hit us up, radtalkwithdg at gmail.com. Shoot mm -hmm. us an uh, email. Otherwise, I mean, if you're watching this video, you already know. That's right. <laughs> That's but, right. I, uh, I, I love that we don't have to plug for the videos. We don't have to plug the socials anymore. This is nice. Just this these big-ass logos that tell us what <laughs> yeah. everybody is. So. <laughs> yeah, it's you're right. It's in the fantastic. Face. And then if you look below, we got the ticker going. That's right. The ticker, that's crazy. I don't know how we didn't. Yeah, I don't know how we didn't have that for three months. It's been there yeah. the whole time. We just yeah. never, <laughs> yeah, so never figured it out. So. And then so, all right, we'll check us out. Until next time, folks. All right, we'll see you. We out. All right, guys, thanks for listening to another episode of Rad Talk. As always, if you enjoyed the content, please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.